Welcome back to the Sales on the Rocks podcast. This is the Friday edition of the Best Damn Agency podcast, your unfiltered, unscripted, no bullshit place for all things agency ownership, life, and of course, agency sales. I run these conversations. My name is JJ Russell, and uh, my business partner in multiple business ventures at this point, uh, the man, the myth, the legend, Joey Gilkey is joining me as always on this show. Hey, What's up, howdy. sir? What's up? How are you? Oh, you know, I'm good. I'm uh, settled, making moves. They say make moves or make excuses. So yeah, and I'm not one to make excuses. So thus, I must be making moves. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I uh, I had the thought the other day. I throw my podcast, our podcast, to listen to the episode where I had to call you on the phone to finish the show. I wanted to hear how it <laughs> sounded. Yeah. yeah, it was awful. The audio was terrible. It was terrible. But then I also realized that on one and a half speed, which is how I listen to almost all podcasts I listen to, mm-hmm. I sound like I'm on cocaine. You can barely hear me. Like Hell I yeah, just dude. talk. I get on these riffs where I start talking about stuff and I get talking real fast. And then it's like, I already sound like I'm on one and a half speed. Mm. So if you speed me up, it's on like, I don't know, light speed. Yeah, so. I just talked to our SDRs about this the other day. Uh, tonation and pace mm. are very important when it comes to your uh, selling abilities. I can give the same script to same people or to different people and get very different outcomes if they have different tones and different paces. Can we talk about that now? <laughs> sure. If you'd like to. <laughs> okay. I don't know. It sounds cool. So give me an example. Okay. And clearly I am terrible at this. So teach me how to do it. Better, do it better. Sure. Well, we can talk about tone first. So um, I think that there are tones that are too excited and there are tones that are too mellow and blah. You kind of want to be in the middle, slightly above base middle. Um, okay. Optimistic enough to sound like you want to be here, uh, but not too optimistic to where you sound fake and annoying as shit. And so instead of being like, hey, JJ, what's up, man? How are you? You know, like that's too much. Or, hey, JJ, this is Joey. How are you? That's very boring. You want to be in the middle. Hey, JJ, this is Joey. How are you? Right? Yeah, that's pretty good. All slightly above very different. Yeah. 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 And then pace. You know, if you sound too fast, you come across as rushed and anxious. The person on the other line is going to be wanting to rush you off because you make them uncomfortable and anxious. If you're too slow, they don't want to be there because like, hey, speed it up, buddy. You cold called me. So you want to have a a, a controlled flow pace of how you talk. Hmm. Because if you're like... Hey, JJ, what's up, man? This is Joe Gilkey from Sales Driven Agency. Just want to reach out to you, man. And it's just like, dude, I'm Whoa. anxious right now. <laughs> you know, or if it's like, hey, JJ, this is Joe Gilkey with Sales Driven Agency. Um, I just wanted to reach it, right? That's too slow. So you want to find a middle ground of, hey, JJ, this is Joe Gilkey with Sales Driven Agency, right? I just wanted to reach out because, right, there's a, it's a controlled, I'm not anxious, I'm comfortable here. You should be comfortable too pace so that's tonation that's Mm -hmm. pace and there's the words you use too which i'm sure we'll get into there's a word for this but i was talking i talked to a counselor that we met with a long time ago or a therapist about this Mm -hmm. basically like you have the ability to change and alter the person's mood that you're around based on like your state so if you are reflecting an anxious worried person people you are around are more likely to feel anxious and worried if you are reflecting a calm you know thoughtful safe person then they're more likely to right. experience those feelings and there's also an aspect of you want to match people once you like mirroring we talk about mirroring in the sales process that's more yep. for like first time appointments and beyond for um, sure but i do think there's there's an element of like in the cold call if you get far enough um which is what i'm teaching the sdrs if you get far enough you want to start trying to regulate based on kind of where they're at if they're a little bit more okay. high energy, then then bring a little bit more energy and have a great conversation. Be fun. Match them. If they're a little bit more low energy, like don't be like this chipper, chipper chip. Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's good. Well, you are gonna have to demonstrate your pace and tone when we mm. do our cold call uh 
role play later on in this call. But before okay. then, let's talk cool. other stuff. So if you're new to the show, welcome. We're glad to have you here. This is, I said unfiltered. It's definitely that. You'll learn sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. Unscripted. I bring a few topics. Joey's not seen them. I've not got a script. I've just got like a question. And then we You did warn me we were going to do a cold call role play, but I didn't practice and I don't care. If it goes horrib horribly, true. then it's because I didn't practice and I haven't cold called in years. If it goes very well, it's up. because I'm excellent. You're, yeah. No, you should just speak that into existence. I will. It will be excellent. It'll be one of the best cold call role plays you guys have ever heard. And it's going to be <laughs> completely zero prep. <laughs> That's right. All right. Well, before we get there, here is an interesting question. One that I've been wrestling with that I we've talked about it a little bit. Um, I feel like business, like when you're just in the weeds building a business day to day, day in, day out, it's very demanding. Um there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot at stake, right? There's just like a lot going on. Um, <laughs> it is easy to look up weeks, if not months down the road when you're in a real like nose to the ground season and yep. be like, oh shit, how'd we get here? Yeah, for like, sure. Personally, like yeah, I, I'm, I'm exhausted. I'm tired and whatever. Um, so even in the midst of like growth phases, how do you not become someone you hate? I'm asking this for myself. Like, yeah. I just don't want to look up one day and be this person that I don't like. Yeah, I think so there's this is why like I always harp on the morning alignment time. You know, yeah. I don't care who you are, I think it's important to align yourself in the mornings. And um I have noticed that I become more anxious or less clear about uh the vision of doing things if I don't do these times. And so I think having a a, a regular a regular meeting with yourself or you kind of remind yourself of why you do the things you do, what's important to you, not only, you know, what type of business do you want to have, but what type of man do you want to be or woman? Um, and, and remind yourself of those things on a regular basis. And I think, again, you're training your reticular activating system to start to bubble those opportunities and reminders to the surface, to your conscious cognizant brain side. Um, I think it's important. And so I think if you do that on a regular basis, then you're going to have check-ins with yourself every day. Um, if you don't, then you are not, right? Very profound, right? <laughs> Thanks, Aristotle. Yeah. <laughs> As a modern-day philosopher. Um, but I think that it, it's very, very, very easy to just get in grind mode and do and do and stay up late and do and do and stay. Like I was up till 9.30 last night. But I also woke up this morning and I had quiet time with myself and realigned myself with the, my why. And I worked out halfway through the day, which I don't typically do. Um, and um, just trying to remind myself of, Hey, this is a, this is, this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Uh, you can't sprint a marathon unless you're like Kenyan or something. And I'm not, Kenyan. Oh, there's a guy by the way, who just ran a sub two hour marathon, which is nuts. It's a four and a half minute mile pace. For 26 Pace. miles. Insanity. Dude, there was... So they put together this thing at, at whatever event they were doing right after this, and they were celebrating this guy. I wish I knew his name. He deserves for me to know his name. Was so he impressive. Kenyan? Yeah. Okay, I'm not going to just go ahead and speculate. Hold on. Sub two hour marathon. Okay, hold on. Also, just the, it, the sheer speed of a four and a half minute mile is absolutely insane. You could literally start and not finish a Star Wars movie and this guy would have run fucking 26 miles <laughs> while you were sitting so, on your ass watching Han Solo. El Elud Kip Chuggy. <laughs> That's nailed it. <laughs> you nailed it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, He's definitely from Louisiana, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh okay, so they they put together this um like big ass uh treadmill. Okay. That was like it was like the size of uh like a room. Like it was huge, it was like 10 feet long. Sick. And it, it basically was this conveyor belt that was running at the pace that you had to run to run that he averaged over the race, right? Oh my gosh. Dude, people would jump on this thing and just try to run in it for 10 seconds. Everyday people, and they couldn't do it, man, because you are hauling. It's a sprint. You're sprinting yeah. 26 miles. That's insane. 
So I don't even you really can't know how we got there. Marathon, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, in life, which is the longest of marathons, mm. I think it's important to um, have push and pull seasons, or even just build in like push and pull days into your week if you're if you know that that you're susceptible to crashing and burning. You know, I think that one thing that's always helped me is like there will always be the next thing to do. And yes, there's deadlines and there's times where it's like, dude, just stay up till 10 and do it. You know, just do yep. it and finish it and knock it out. It's You're going to be better for it. But then I think you should try to reward yourself relatively shortly after with, uh, cool, I'm going to have no expectations of myself for the next three hours. I'm going to go do something for myself. Um, yeah. The next day or, or sometime that week and make sure you schedule your rest. I was pretty convicted by this recently. My wife's like, hey, you don't rest. Like you're just not resting at all, and you look tired. You look kind of sickly to some degree, mm. and and you're not doing well. And I, and she could sense it. What's funny is a, a buddy of mine actually texted me the other day, and he said that he goes, "Hey, we talked the other day. Just a public service announcement. You didn't seem like you were doing well. Dang. So whatever you got to do to start doing well, you should probably start doing that now." I was like, oh. So what to, to this point, um, I'm going to the beach next week. Super mm-hmm. fired up. This is uh this is my beach hat. I'd turn it around, but it, yeah. it'd be impossible for me to get it back on in a way that looks anyway decent on camera. We've talked about this. My hat never goes on right on camera. It's ridiculous. I care too much, but it's ridiculous. Okay. Totally ridiculous. Um so going to the beach, and then you've got like these beach lifestyle people. It just got me thinking about them like the people that move out to wherever and Bali. they just yeah, and they live, you know, they work remote, but they work 20-hour weeks, and their their life kind of goal is to just chill, like to have as much zen and chill as possible. There's a guy that I was talking to recently. He's a, a coach, and he lives in, I think, maybe like Arizona, mm-hmm. and um, posts all these pictures of himself like camping and like hiking and shirtless in the woods and his things like, dude, I worked way too much. Like now I just want to, I want to chill. My thoughts, like, what do you think about that decision? Is it just like a, you know, that's your priority kind of thing? Or like, do those people not achieve or have enough of like an achiever mentality? Or is it actually better to think that way? I don't, I don't know. Uh, I think it's a to each their own. I don't think that anyone, I don't think that anyone is meant to just chill forever. Okay. Right. I think that even these people who live these lifestyle businesses and and chill and do nothing find themselves like, I'll give you a good example. Tim Ferriss literally wrote the book on the four hour work week, how to basically not work and live a lifestyle business forever. Tim has also come out and said that he's like the most depressed, most anxious person of all time. So I think there's an aspect of, of it's give and take. I think that if you look, let's just take Mm. whether you believe the Bible or you don't, if you look at the story of Genesis before the, what they call the fall of man, where Adam and Eve were in the garden. Whether you think this is a, a metaphor, a story, or it's real, it doesn't really matter. I think the principles are the same. Uh, before there was ever sin that entered the world, before the fall of man, uh, work work was 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 not a result of bad things, right? It was not a punishment. We are not called to work as a punishment. In fact, we were told, or Adam and Eve were told in the garden by God in this. Uh, story that uh, they were to do two things. This is before sin, before punishment, before any of that. It was to be fruitful and multiply, right? Do what married people do and work this garden, right? Till it, subdue the the earth, right? And so, so work is a good thing that is not a punishment. So we should not look at work as a punishment to do. Hmm. So I think that there's an aspect of you can find yourself in a pretty depressed place if you chill all the time and you don't do anything you don't build anything you don't create anything with your hands uh, i think that's what we're meant to do and so i think it's i think it's both i think you get to have seasons of all but just know that you're not going to be happy just chilling there was some statistic about like men and the average uh amount of time they live after they officially retire mm. and i want to say it was like five to seven years like it was and it's like you kind of retire and then you sort of wither up you know like my yep. dad is even he's he's he'll be 63 i think at the end of this year 
and I was just hanging out with him. He's like, I, I don't want to retire. Like I'm, he's at the place in his it's career where even though he works at a big corporation, he, they've, they know the things he does best and he gets to do those things every day. Right. He's like, well, why would I stop doing these things I love every day? And I have some flexibility, but I like get to make an impact. I don't want to retire. That's why I, I think know. like we are the luckiest people in the world that we enjoy building and creating, you know, like, yeah. this is not a, this doesn't feel like a job to me to, to build and create. It feels like I get to do my hobby every day and it's acceptable and it actually pays me very well. Um, and it affords me to go do whatever I want to do for the most part within reason. Right. And yeah, I, I realist I realistically could, could go live in Croatia for a month right now. You know, they'd probably have some things, but the business wouldn't tank and we wouldn't go under by any means. Um, and I could go do that. I just, don't really want to right now. Uh, I think I would, but yeah, I think to each their own. I think the people who are currently in the season, you're seeing them right now in their season of yeah. chilling, mm-hmm. but give them five years of chilling. I, I bet they will feel a sense of discontentment. Um, and I think that we are built to create and build. And I, and I have a pretty strong confidence that a lot of people who hate their job, hate their job because they don't feel like they're contributing or building anything substantial or, or, or meaningful to them. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, well, one place we get to build and do that together and mm-hmm. we'll promo this before we get into this uh, cold call role play. So that's up next. I just want oh, you to sweet. be able to like, nice. I know your brain can like think and plan stuff and say stuff at the same time that are totally mm-hmm. unrelated. It's like you have this weird ability to like, Jedi mind trick your brain into two different places. Sure. So as you do this SDA ad read, I want you to be ready and thinking through our cold call role play. But uh, what I'm is not SDA? Gonna think Joe? through it. We're just gonna wing it and go for it. Um, sales driven agency. This episode, this podcast is mostly funded entirely by Sales Driven Agency and the Best Name Agency Mastermind. Uh, but Sales Driven Agency, we are a uh, pretty established company at this point who knows how to build sales operations, sales processes, hire and train salespeople, build out sales technology so that all of this can run seamlessly inside of your agency. Uh, Sales Driven Agency builds out sales ops. So we come into your agency in a very condensed amount of time. We have teams and experts uh, who come in. They build out all your sales processes. They hire. We recruit, hire, and train your salespeople for you. And uh, we put you in the driver's seat as we uh, build out the sales operation. So think of us like a, a fractional VP of sales that comes in and, and does everything you would hope and dream a VP of sales does, but we do it on a very short timeline because we have teams instead of one person. Uh, and we do it very effectively and efficiently because we have uh, done this so many times for agencies specifically. So if you're an agency and you want predictable growth, you want sustainable growth, you want to optimize and scale that growth, you want to have salespeople selling for your agency instead of the founder being dependent. You want outbound sales to work instead of being dependent on referrals and, and sporadic inbound. Then come check us out at www.salesdrivenagency.com. Uh, fill out an application, jump on the calendar, talk to our team. If we're a good fit, then we'll explain what it looks like to work with us and how our process works. Um, if we're not a good fit, then we will send you on your merry way in a better direction that we think and deem better for you. Uh, either way, go to www.salesdrivenagency.com. Bang, bang. That's it. You should go there. So is it? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There used to be a saying, uh, bang, bang, skeet, skeet. I forget what it's from. Uh, uh, probably something song. wildly inappropriate, yeah. but skeet, skeet, shooting, get it, bang, bang, gun. Skeet, yeah, yeah, it. yeah, yeah, I got Not it, I got sexual. it. I never is with you. It never is, but it always is all at the same I time. I am so. asexual. I prefer not to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Technically, if you're, if you're, a, is it asexual? Asexual, I think, means you have sex with yourself only. You mm-hmm. can reproduce with yourself. Which I think yeah. there is an animal in the wild that can do that, or maybe it's an amoeba. I don't know. There's some sort of organism. Yeah, it's like it's an organism. It's like some. Uh, anyway, we're yeah. well, neither of us are smart. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> not in that category. Some some biologist is listening to this right now. Like these guys are fucking idiots. Okay, if the biologist is listening to this podcast. We have made it. 
they're a biologist turned agency owner and they suck at sales because they were a biologist. That's fair. That's why they're here. All right. So I've got three scenarios that we use for role playing. So if you're role playing a cold call, right? Okay. Um, you're going to call in if you're an actual SDR or sales rep, whatever, to a business or a okay. um, ideal prospect. You're not going to always get the same response. So you should, when you do your cold calls, practice different scenarios. Mm, um, yep. You, there's even like three. Di- so you could call in, you could get a gatekeeper. That's going to happen a lot. And then yeah. you need to practice like how you're going to diffuse that situation or navigate that situation. Uh, we're not going to do that because that's not any fun. So mm. we will play like you are cold calling your ideal decision maker. Uh, let's say you are an SEO agency doing, I don't know, 4 million. You sell to, I don't know, you want to be you sell to SaaS or you want to, who do you want to sell to? You tell me. I don't, I don't give a shit, dude. Just tell me what I got to sell. I'll be a... <laughs> We shat on dentists last week, so I'll be. A, I own multiple dentist offices. I'm, I, I'm a, multiple locations. I'm yeah, and we multiple do SEO locations for dentists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. and this is a this is a cold call. I am the dentist. You're calling me, and you're going to get me on the phone. I've never talked okay. to you before. So I'm going straight to the dentist. What's your what's your and what's your goal here? What's your goal with this call? My goal is to get a first time appointment. And I'm going to do my best to not just like bend over and make it easy for you. Okay. This is lovely. I haven't made a cold call in years and I didn't know we we're going to do this. <laughs> well, I knew we we're going to do cold calling, but one, I didn't prep. And two, I had no idea what I was selling until just now. I'm selling SEO to dentists. Let's do it. Mm-hmm. You ready? Yep. Ring, ring. Yeah. Hello. Hey, is this JJ? Uh, it is. Hey, JJ, this is Joey Gilkey. Um, listen, man, you're, you're going to hate me for this, uh, but this is a cold call. Do you want to hang okay. up or can I have 27 <laughs> seconds to tell you why I called? Man, uh, just for that opener, you can have 27 seconds. That's it, though. Well, okay, I got thank you. I appreciate that. I always hope that that works. Uh, listen, man, so um, we work specifically with dentist practices, just like you, multi-location. We work local. Um, our goal with dentists and what we do for a living is we help dentists drive more patients to their practice without having to spend money on ads um, or go out and, and build this massive complex thing. We do it through search engine optimization. So let me ask you real quick. How are you guys currently driving patients to your dental practice? Man, a lot of it is uh, just kind of word of mouth in the local community. We we do some some local radio ads. Um, we've got a website; it's outdated. We've not really done much on the digital marketing side. I know that we could be getting a lot more from that, but we've yeah. I don't know. We we've done more like traditional media. I said we've done radio already. Um, okay. Yeah. Got it. Cool. Um, which, by the way, that's the fact that you can grow it all through word of mouth means you guys are good at what we do. So, congrats on that. Um, and we love to support folks who are established and, and, and do have a, a presence locally because search engine optimization, which oh, that's a fancy word. I'm sure you know what that means, but just helps you show up higher than your competitors on Google. And it drives more traffic to your site, more traffic goes to your site, more patients book appointments. So uh, another question I have is how many locations do you guys currently have? We have three. Okay. So based on, and again, we will only work with dentists based on three, you guys are probably doing somewhere in the two to two and a half million dollar revenue range yeah give, we, give or take. so we're approaching three. Oh, great so you guys are super profitable love it um so are you guys investing at all in search engine optimization or is it just kind of like a people come to our website it's either through our ads or it's randomly yeah right now we don't really have a pulse on it if i'm being honest i know it's a place that we need to improve um okay. we've talked to a few different I guess agencies okay. sound you know similar to what you guys are are selling. I'm sure, and um, I don't know the the, the pricing has never been there. I've never seen the return on investment that like makes sense. Mm. They all sell me on like there's an on ramp. You know, it, it's kind of organic in the way that it grows. Yeah. It takes time, and I'm just I get this quick injection of of clientele with all the radio hits that we do. Mm. Um, referrals are, are super easy, right? Like word of mouth, super easy. We have really loyal customers. And so going out and exploring this, this other avenue that seems like it's a little bit more like hit or miss takes time. Like, I, I don't know. It's just not. Something yeah. I, I 100% 
a hundred percent get that. Now, um, I kind of like, like to liken this a little bit to kind of working out. I don't know if you're into fitness at all, but, uh, I'm very much into it. And, and part of, of fitness, uh, if you, if you're into it, then you'll, you'll understand this a little bit, but there's, there's shortcuts that we can take quick wins that we can take. We want those things, right? They, they, they boost our health a little bit, at least seasonally. But then there's the evergreen decisions we make that have a long-term impact um, okay. that is far more sustainable. And so I'm sure you can see where I'm going with this, but SEO is more of that long-term play. Yes. So there is some truth to what they're talking about when they say like it does take some time. But if I'm being honest with you, there's a lot of people in the industry that because we're retainer-based, we do drag our feet a little bit because the the longer it takes, the more money we make. Um I don't necessarily subscribe to that, but there is still some truth to that because it does take a little bit of time. It doesn't take as much time as some people um, typically say that it does. Um, if let me ask you this question: If I was to sit down with you and I was to kind of show you our plan, and and I could walk you through and do some research even on your specific area, your dental practice keywords that would be worth ranking for. If we sat down and kind of talked to those things, and I kind of showed you a step by step process a proven way of of how we might be able to help you guys rank higher than your competition drive more appointments and do it on a shorter timeline than you're than you're probably heard of before would that be of interest to you yeah i mean candidly i'm, I'm super interested i think it is going to come back to price okay. um so it might it might not even be worth stepping into that conversation before yeah. i know what it costs I mean, what's it cost to work with you guys it's, it's entirely dependent well and you're going to hate this word, this phrase as well, but it's an, it depends case by case. Um, there are certain ways that that we can accelerate speed because, again, just more resources. We can we can do some strategies that we can accelerate the process. Again, it it really depends on return on your investment. If you put a dollar in and you get five out, you're probably happy with that. Um, if you put a dollar and you get ten out, you're probably really happy. And there's different ways to get five out versus ten out. It just depends on what route do we choose. It's always going to be profitable because we're good at what we do. <laughs> It's just a matter on, on what timeline and to what degree. And so that's really up to you. And, and that's something that if we were to sit down and talk, I know I interrupted your day, so I don't want to take any more of your time. Um, but what I'd love to do is sit down and talk through what are those numbers? What would a return on investment look like? And we have a proven process that we do attach a guarantee to um, that if we don't produce, then then we do a few things that that kind of secure your, your investment and help mitigate some risk. Um, so it sounds like it's probably worth us sitting down for 20, 30 minutes. Um, to talk through this, I've actually got my calendar up now. If you wouldn't mind opening yours up, how does Thursday at nine o'clock or Friday at ten o'clock look for you? Sorry, my kid just walked in. It's okay. Uh, hey, you need to, you need to leave. <laughs> I love you. Okay, I love you too. So I would have booked the call with you right there. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was great. Uh, we were I was gonna step out of character anyway, so that works fine. Um, dang, that was good. So end scene, end scene, That's great. Mission accomplished. Call book. That is the goal of any first time appointment is to get the or sorry a first of a cold call is to get the first time appointment booked. Um, I actually threw a few. I threw a few good wrinkles at you. I thought I, yep. I wanted to pricing wanted and- to go pricing. Um, out there that we'd had some bad experiences in the past that you worked through that that we weren't super interested in seo because we were trying you know we were just more traditionally media or or referral based um man i thought you handled it all really well so let's what are some things that stand out to you is like i did this really well on the call i mentioned a few of them or a few objectives yeah objectives. i don't sell dental to dentists or seo so i don't even know if half the shit i said was true but um let's assume it was I think some of it was, it was obvious I've been there before. I'm confident. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not bashing competition. I'm kind of puffing like, hey, there's some truth to what they're saying. But however, you know, this is just the industry. And and we're we're aware of that. Yeah, because if you say that everybody else is terrible at this. Yeah, then you just don't sound. That doesn't earn you a lot of credibility. Yeah. No, and no one ever wins by tearing down everyone else's building. Um, So I think there's that. I think there is a calmness to my pace. Um. I think that the best thing in a cold call or just being cold in general is is keeping them on the phone by asking them a question at the end of me saying something. So right, I, when you gave me the 30 seconds for the pitch, I gave my pitch and went straight into a question. Yep. Right? And then I talked. I gave an answer, went straight into my next question. I got enough information to say, hey, I think it's probably worth our time. You gave me an objection. I handled it. Went straight into booking. Right? And, and yeah. 
didn't even it was an assum- assumptive close right the assumptive close was sounds like sounds yeah, like it's yeah. good fit here's my calendar open yours up here's time what do you think that works that's what i did well uh, yeah one so one thing that people probably noticed so you said can i have a quick 27 seconds of your time i will so first of all i love that you said you're gonna you're gonna hate me or what'd you say uh, uh yeah so <laughs> let me talk about that first that's what that's what i yeah. um you know, I, I last week talked about uh, I taught that to our, our new SDRs, and he he went and applied it the next morning and actually landed mm. a, an appointment through it. Um, so it comes down to your tone, it comes down to your pace, it comes down to the words you say. And so the tone part was, "Hey JJ, this is Joey Gilkey. Hey, listen, man, you're gonna hate me for this. This is a cold call, right? It's self deprecating. It's yep. kind of fun. I'm calling out the obvious, so we don't have to. Just, you don't have to like." I don't have to pretend like it's not a cold call. I'm not, I'm not trying to get around you and I'm not trying to like pull one over fast on you. Do you want to hang up or can I have 27 seconds? And, and I changed my tone there. You hear I dropped it. Hey, hey, JJ, this is Joey Gilkey. Hey, listen, man. Right. I kind of like, hey, I'm going to let you in on a secret mm-hmm. here. Right. And then I, I, I transitioned when I was asking the question and I said, like, very curious, like, do you want to hang up or can I have 27 seconds of your time? Right. It's like a, it's like, a, hey, you, you could get off. I'm going to let you. But is it worth just hearing 27 seconds? I've gotten this far, right? That's kind of what it comes across mm-hmm. as. And I use 27 yep. because it's an obscure number that kind of like shocks them out of like, that's random. And then you're, you held to it. Like, I was really interested to see how you were going to do a value prop for a company you've never sold, you know, an industry you've never sold to. An I don't even know it was a good value sold. prop. I just went for it. <laughs> I don't know. It was good. And you went for it and it was short. It was very brief and it felt like it, it kind of got to the solution. I forget. Maybe it was like we help our dentists, multifamily dentists land more clients or get, I forget exactly ex- what you said there, but it was very like solution more centric. appointments without spending money on ads or yeah, out some it was complex funnel or something. We help you solve this problem without doing this thing. I mean, it's your value prop formula that you've used a thousand times. Yeah. Um, nope. say, yep. say, the, say the formula out loud real quick. It's the no competition positioning statement, but it's always um, we help fill in the blank audience accomplish, achieve, get whatever they want to accomplish without pain point that they're used to experiencing through our proven process, whatever you want to call it, intellectual property, mm-hmm. inject the name. Yeah. Um, so you did that and then you ran straight into the question. So let me ask you a quick question. What are you currently doing to win more business or find more clients or get yep. more appointments or whatever the question was? Um, and, and what's cool is being on the other side of that conversation, dude, I didn't even feel like, I didn't even think about the opportunity that I didn't have to end mm-hmm. the call. Yep. Because you asked me a question and we just jumped straight into a conversation. So even though I only gave you 27 seconds, it wasn't like a, do I have your permission to keep talking? It was like, yeah, I did my 27 seconds. Now here's my question. Mm-hmm. And then, then so we're basically the it works in, in pieces. So you have like a seven second hook to get the 30 seconds and then you have 30 seconds to get the next two minutes basically. And then you have like yep. a minute to kind of tie it up. Yeah, I mean, I'd be interested to go back. I bet our call was no longer than five minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, they usually go no you, longer than eight, and a good call is usually three to five, probably. Well, overall, I felt like that was pretty damn good, which it should nice. be because you you sell this stuff. Even if you were unprepared, <laughs> you are uh, quite the sales master thank you. at this point. Why, thank so. you. Um, that was really good. If you want to get around Joey... And you want to learn mm. about all the stuff that he knows. You don't just want us to build you something. You want to, you want to get to know this man as man. Oh, a man. A man. A, a this man's is a man. man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then you could do that in the place, the only place that people have unfettered access to him. And that is the best damn agency man. That's right. And if you're watching this on YouTube, congratulations. You get to see this visually are extremely well thought out and extremely expensive sizzle reel that we put together. The best damn agency mastermind is something that JJ and I put together. Uh, We're on our second year now. And we have an incredible group of gentlemen who run very successful digital agencies. So everyone in this group is doing seven or eight figures, minimum seven figures. Um, And the reason we did that is because we wanted to get people in the room who are working on not just their business, but had the luxury of also building something special 
that enables them to also work on who they are as, as, as human beings. And so what we want to do is we want to bring in people who are at the level where they are becoming that CEO or they are that CEO and they're having to multiply and think larger, bigger picture for a lot of people, think uh, bigger picture for market share and growth, uh, but also want to think bigger picture for who they are as husbands, as fathers, as community members, as, as people, human beings on this earth who are here to make an impact um, and leave some sort of mark with their time here. And so the Best Damn Agency Mastermind is a collective, a small, intimate collective group. Right now, I think we're at 30-ish members um, of everyone doing seven and eight figures. Everyone in there is a CEO or a co-founder or a founder of a digital agency. Um, and we are there to multiply and grow and sharpen one another. If you are looking for a community of people uh, that really challenges one another to become a lot more in life and build a lot more of a special, a lot more of a special, not a real phrase, but <laughs> a more special version of themselves and their business, their agency specifically, then go check out www.bestdamnagency.co. Again, www.bestdamnagency.co. Uh, watch the video, listen to testimonials, listen to transformations that these very successful guys have had uh, since being in this mastermind. And if it seems like it's something that you would want to be a part of, then uh, fill out an application. Talk to JJ. If you talk to JJ uh, and that goes well, you'll talk to me. If you talk to me and that goes well, hold your horses. You're not in yet. I pitch you to our council that I assembled to keep us accountable to being the best of agency mastermind. And if they approve you, then welcome. Your life's about to be transformed. Get excited. Best damn agency mastermind. That's it. Yeah, more specialer. <laughs> more special life. Oh, I love that we get, you know, a handful of inbound leads. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, right now, I'd say what, like half a dozen a month. It's not like a, we, we don't put a yeah. lot in, into this. Uh, but well, everybody that's we kind of pre qualify is, most people. I know. And they've all been super, the people that come through are qualified, which is fun. Mm -hmm. um, but we had our first like troll come through the. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the inbound lead you know, uh -huh. flow and it was like you're a joke that i think the exact phrase no, they said was, uh your stuff is arrogant well and then they also said and this is this is what i wanted to hit on real quick mm -hmm. they said how can you coach something you've never done how can you coach people to build something yes. you've never done yourself there's multiple pieces of that that are so wrong like okay one sales driven agency is a you know, high seven figure, super profitable agency, your take home is as much as everybody else in the mastermind who's making, you know, 15 or $20 million because your profit margins are balling with our company because we get our shit done and we charge a premium and we solve a massive problem. Mm -hmm. um, so like in terms of building a highly profitable company, you've done it. Mm -hmm. um, similarly, or I guess point number two, we're not pitching J the joey gilkey guru show like that's just not like i know i told i pitched like come in and get unfettered access to joey uh, if you didn't catch that that was tongue-in-cheek like it was yeah. like being around joey's great and joey knows agency sales better than anybody i've ever met but we're not pitching joey as somebody that's exited like a a 50 million dollar agency you're mm -hmm. not exited an agent because you're not an agent you're not a digital agency you are right. a sales growth engine for agencies and so yeah, our goal is not to very well our goal is not to create a place where people come just to get your IP. If that was mm -hmm. the case, like I wouldn't get super excited about this. What we're building yeah. is a community of people who are committed to a unbelievably tight standard or high standard of excellence, multiplication, and reciprocity. And when you get all of those people in the room and you you actually curate it, you're not just the mastermind that lets everybody in and takes a paycheck every month, but you like we've kicked more people out than have left. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. When you bring that group of people together, the value is massive for everybody. And Huge. so uh, to you haters out there, I don't know, <laughs> keep keep hating. It makes it more fun, I guess. It is. You're also it does make not it from the United States. So it doesn't <laughs> yeah, really bother me. <laughs> I looked up, I did, I did a little reverse IP because I had a hunch it was over, overseas. Um, yeah. And they're in, the, they're in like UK or Germany or something like that. I don't know. Some are they're, just angry. they're just angry they don't live here. All right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs>
let's so we are with sales driven agency we are uh getting ready to and you've we, at this point when this gets published we might have hired somebody already but you are looking for an additional sales coach sales trainer to ride alongside of our clients and help ensure slash like elevate their salespeople's success yep. yes um, we've talked about how a VP of sales is really a, oh, I'm going to get this wrong, a leader, a manager, and a coach. Yeah. Is that right? Nailed it. Yes. I've gotten that wrong multiple times now. All right. So this coach, I mean, we call them a sales coach and that's really what they are. Like they're not yeah. this person's manager. They're not, uh, really their leader. They've got people internally that do that within the agencies they work for. Yeah. They are strictly a coach. So let's talk about the coach role that a VP of sales plays, but like, is that the same thing that we're looking for with this position that we're hiring for or that this person does in this engagement? Yeah, so I think in general, as a sales leader, who is also a manager and a coach, the coach aspect of it is, is I, is it's the person that you are coaching, right? You are thinking for the individual. What do they need? Where are they deficient? Where are they excelling? Do they need encouragement? Do they need to be challenged? What resources should I give them? Do they need training? Um, where can we optimize? Where can we improve? Like those are all coaching mechanisms. Whereas management is like holding you accountable to metrics and KPIs and things like that. And leader is more like okay. motivating you towards the end goal and thinking big picture and setting the trajectories and the forecast for the company and that kind of stuff. The coach is more of that I'm going to sit next to you and understand you and what you need and how I can get it to you. Um, what I'm looking for is that, but also like an aspect of, of coaching because we're, we're adopting so much. Our sales trainer and sales coach needs to have the ability to coach and train and challenge our clients to adopt something that they've never built themselves, right? We're building this big elaborate sexy machine for them but they need to be challenged to keep adopting it and then simultaneously there's the other side of it which is we're also hiring salespeople for you and those salespeople are then being trained and coached by our sales coach sales trainers on a regular basis to ensure that they are also adopting the sales methodologies the sales processes getting campaign strategy all that kind of stuff um, from us so yeah i think it's uh, a VP of sales, an ex VP of sales would be a great sales coach addition for us. Okay. Uh, that's really cool. And I think the overlap there too is like they, they are helping troubleshoot specific problems for specific people or helping them grow in specific yeah. areas. They have to understand where they're at and what they need. That's what you said. It's great. Um, all right. I have an idea okay. for our delivery team that pertains mm. to sales. Um, that I'm going to just, you've never heard this idea before and I'm going to okay. throw it out there and I want to get your take on it. All okay. right. Hot take. Let's do it. Hot take. All right. So our roadmap process historically is our salesperson sells the four or $5,000 thing. They buy the roadmap, the clients buy the roadmap. Okay. Um, the delivery team is on the kickoff call and sets expectations for the roadmap. Um, and then different members on our delivery team pay, play various parts in the delivery, like the creation of the roadmap. Okay. But then the sales rep, our senior salesperson, is the one that actually delivers this roadmap and walks clients through it and then has conversations you know, where they would follow up and then sell them into the full engagement. Um, so my thought is, would it not be beneficial to strategically bring in a client success manager or a sales coach or somebody who actually like will be engaged throughout the entire process of delivering the full thing and who understands like the granularities of each step yeah into the presentation of the roadmap so like not just building it but the delivery maybe maybe our senior salesperson matt is the one who's like ultimately closing the deal and doing all the follow-up but in that call Maybe it's led by a client success manager or, again, somebody on the delivery side who knows the ins and outs of, of what we do. I think it's, a, it's a, a warmer transfer of trust. It kind of inundates them even deeper into our process. Mm. And, yeah, I think it's a little bit more of like an assumptive close. If you're already working with the person that's, that you're going to be working with yeah. in the full engagement. What are your thoughts? I like that idea a lot. It's a good idea. Okay. Way to go. Um, okay. 
The challenge is going to be scheduling and timing and mm, getting a CS capacity. in to, to be able to make that. I mean, which is, is not a that's a that's a fairly on this on this in the grand scheme of all the problems we're trying to solve. That's not a very difficult one to solve. Um, we just got to make sure we're syncing salesperson and CSMs calendar um, and then making sure we're coaching the CSM on how to not screw it up. Um, the end goal is to is to close them on the full engagement so that we can actually help them versus like give away free advice all the time and let them kick the can and extract as much from a CSM as possible. Um, but I think it's great. I think have, I like team selling. Um, I think that would work really well as uh, also for um, like SEO, you know, like an SEO agency who does a roadmap, diagnostic, yep. keyword, break, whatever it is. If they do that, it, it might be helpful to have an SEO specialist um, or, or something like that who's coupled with the salesperson to answer some of the technical questions, um, some of the ins and outs, the days of the days, how we're going to get this. Um, so I like that. I think it's good. I think historically, we built the roadmap process when it was just me selling. And it made sense because it was all my intellectual property. I knew how it was going to be delivered, ins and outs, because it yep. came from my brain. And so it made sense for me to let the team at that time, it was just me and Josh and some assistants, um, let the team on Josh's side do the roadmap, give it back to me. And then I could spend five minutes looking at it and be able to give every smart answer possible as we've grown and evolved. Maybe it would make sense to, and maybe that would increase our conversion in the back end If, if there was that one assumptive close, but also just that, that wisdom. From the well, and aligning expectations too, where like, let's say that in the roadmap, you get a detailed question about comp plans or hiring and timeline and different things. Matt, as the sales guy, is only going to yeah. know that at a, you know, t- he knows it, he knows it deep enough to like give a, a semi-accurate answer. But if they want like a a really granular. Yeah. Not like that, that idea. That, yeah. Anyways. Okay. All idea. right. Well, to those of you out there that have a foot in the door, maybe it's helpful also to bring in somebody from your delivery team to do what Joey mentioned, a little bit of a team selling component where you're leveraging their expertise. And I would say like maybe doing that earlier in the process is is a is a unnecessary pull on resources. Yes. Right? But for they us, need to be like paid once we've, time. we've delivered the roadmap... It's like that we have what, like an 80% close rate on the back end of roadmaps. These people yeah. are the closest people in our pipeline to closing a full engagement. It could yeah. be worth it. Well, and I think historically I had a 92% when I was doing the roadmaps. I think Matt's probably in the 70s. And so I think there is probably a chasm there for a reason. And maybe that's the reason. Way to go. Good job. Yeah, it's an head idea. Of de- All head right. Of delivery. Head of delivery making process improvements as the role described. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> making process improvements, throwing darts at a dartboard. It's all it's all great. Um, well, we'll wrap here. I uh, I'm going to the beach next week, and nice. I I had a thought for you. It's more of a mindset question. So, okay. um, I mentioned at the top of the call we dug into like this the beach bum mindset. People that just want to like lifestyle business work four hour weeks but maybe they're miserable because they're not contributing to society so when you hit uh, a point or a threshold where you no longer have to work to support your family uh which you might already be at that place i don't know um i don't know for how many years but probably five years yeah so like let's say that you got to a point where money was no longer an issue period Mm -hmm. um like, will you work? Will you continue to work? And what will that look like for you? 100%. Will it change? What's funny, dude, is like before I had money and success, like my goal was to retire at 35, you know, and live off passive income and all that kind of stuff. Like, I'm not even 31. And I could have technically probably done that a year or two ago. And, you know, obviously, I wouldn't be able to afford some of the things that I've purchased in the past year, like a multi million dollar ranch and all that kind of stuff and keep that up. Um, yeah, I just, I, the more I thought about it, the more I realized like I need to be punched in the face every now and then. And I need <laughs> to, I need to have something I'm building. And um, I, I like to do things for profit because like, I don't, I don't think that I'm ever going to be like the philanthropist guy. 
one, I think most philanthropy is bullshit. It's just a way of like patting ourselves on the back. We don't actually give a shit about whoever we're helping. Um, but two, I think that for-profit businesses are obviously better run than nonprofits yep. because they have resources. Shocker. Um, and and two, I think that money is just a value exchange. It's a it's a measuring stick on how how much value you're providing to a market or a person or people group. So. Um, I came to that realization probably three years ago where I was like, There's, I have no desire anymore to, to retire. Um, yep. I would like to work myself into uh, a a more of a, a balanced life um, okay. where I have more consistent push and pulls, you know, and I think that um, that's probably not too distant, probably in the next three to five years. So maybe by 35, okay. I want to be maybe doing more like investing portfolio type of companies where I'm buying yeah. companies and the other companies I have are helping grow those companies I buy and or get acquisition or get advisory in. Um, and I'm, I'm getting my building juices flowing through that. But, um, and that, but I do, I, I would like to take more, you know, I would like to take my month in Croatia and my, you know, in the winters, go to San Diego for a month. Ooh, which I've done yeah. it before. I did two weeks there. I did two weeks in Croatia. Uh, nothing ever breaks as much as or as bad as you think it would. But no, as, you go cool. to, as you go to the beach, my advice to you would be to uh, delete your email and delete Slack and delete your social accounts. Bring your computer if you feel the need to check in and and have points in the day where you are allowed to give yourself 20 minutes to check in. Or if you have meetings like that you want to be on, go to those meetings. But I would, I would take a, a little moleskin and, or your notes app, whatever you feel like taking notes in. And then as you're on the beach and hanging out and reading books or whatever, you just allow yourself to <laughs> problem solve and ideate and think bigger and get rest. Yeah. <laughs> One thing is very clear to me right now. You've never been on a trip with three kids. <laughs> <laughs> Only one. Well, that's not true. My nieces and nephews are... I've never had to fully uh, manage them, but I had to manage my kid this past time. Dude. Uh, they're, other than nap time and after he goes to bed, when which is when you're exhausted. Uh, yeah, there, there was not a whole lot of time for chilling. Well, I so the overall principle of shutting down a little bit, getting some space, and then using that space you know, for something productive that's like not work, work, just like dreaming, ideating. Yeah, you're building whatever. in your mind. You're solving problems and ideating. I, I'm all on board. I will also say that we stopped calling our vacations family vacations and we yeah. call them family trips because they are work. <laughs> they are work. It's like, it's like taking your kids to a restaurant. It's like it's not an enjoyable evening out to eat. It's like one, it's expensive as shit. And two, someone gets ketchup in their eyes and starts crying and the next person wants to get in the playground. It's like, all right, this is not fun. Speaking of, I really want to go to, uh, now you got me wanting tacos. Taco Tuesday. Oh, well, we dude, record on Tuesday. It's produced on Fridays. Yeah. Sorry, guys. For those of you still listening that don't know that, shocker. We record on Tuesdays. I did drink some bourbons, though, this time. It was really delicious. Um, you did? That, did you drink? Yeah. I had a, uh, I wrapped up my bottle of uh, Rabbit Rabbit Hill. Nice. I'm drinking. Yeah, it's fantastic. Cancer in a can. In uh, zero carb, zero sugar, Monster Energy. Ah, very nice. That's the choice of champions right there. So it is dead champions. Um. Well, Joey, thanks for the conversation. Thanks for diving in and doing something that most people would find uncomfortable, but uh, you're not one of those people. Which is a on the spot role play. Thought it was super valuable. Hopefully, it was helpful to those listening. Unconscious those listening. competence. <laughs> That's it. You got to get to that point. And if you don't know what we're talking about, go listen to some other episodes. Uh, rate, review, subscribe, watch YouTube. It's more fun. You get to see the videos and Joey's face and all the things. Um, as always, you can find us back here next week for next week's edition of the Sales on the Rocks podcast. Until then, later. Toodaloo, motherfuckers.